So welcome back everybody. Today I'm glad to be able to share this with you, how to make this cake topper. But not only how to make this cake topper, where to get this image that you can use for free and how to make it a print then cut, no matter what machine you're using. But also not only that, I'm gonna talk just a tiny bit about sublimation. I did sublimation on this, but of course you can do printable vinyl, heat transfer vinyl, and put it on a bag. This one happens to be a Cricut one that's for their fusible ink. The other things that I made, as you saw in the beginning, were these little boxes. And I think they're super cute for a gift or if you're having a party. Now, for those of you who don't have little kids, don't worry about it because you can do this for anything. Maybe you know someone who's turning 30. You can use the same techniques that you're going to learn here today for making decorations for those parties. Or what if you know someone who's retiring, someone who's going to be 50? You know, so these don't just have to be for kids. I just happen to be using kid style images today because so many of you requested it on my Facebook group. So I so appreciate it, you guys. Thank you so much. I'm glad to hear that you wanted to see this. So let's get started. Okay, the first thing I thought I would do is show you where I got these really nice large images. You go to highclipart.com, highclipart.com. If you go, let's see if I open this in a new tab, it looks just like this. And then all I did was type in Paw Patrol and hit enter on my keyboard. And then I came in here and saw tons of these Paw Patrol images. Well, here's one of the ones that I may have decided to use, this one with a number four on it. So let's click on that to open it up. And once it's open, it looks like this. Now, you're going to download this. Be careful, though, because there's lots of places you might think to download, like open. No, we know that's an ad because it says ad choices right here, and I'm going to exit out. Here's another ad I'm going to X out. Finally, I come down here where it says resize the PNG clip art online. That means I can make this clip art smaller if I wanted to, but I'm going to leave it just as it is and say download original PNG. Here comes another ad. I'm going to get rid of that. And now you can see down here in the lower left hand corner that that's downloading. So it's in my download folder. Paw Patrol Childhood PNG. Let's open it up and look. Beautiful, right? Okay, let's X that out. The other thing I wanted to show you before we leave here is the font that I'm going to use is from defont.com. Here it is. It's called butter layer. And I really like the way the numbers looked for this. I thought they were pretty cute. So in order to get this, you'll go to defont.com. Just type in butter layer. It opens like this. Then all you have to do is say download. And as you'll notice, it's downloading here. I'm using a Windows machine. It's downloading here on the lower left. I'll double click on that to open it. There it is, but I can't use it yet. I have to extract it extract all and say extract and I'll just leave it in my downloads folder which is where it extracts automatically. Once it's extracted I'll double click on it and I'll say install. Now it's already been installed on my computer so I'm not going to do this again. However, a very very important thing to remember when you're installing fonts is it's not going to show up in your program unless you first close your program and then reopen it. Think of it like this. When you close your program and reopen it, it's allowing your program to reload any new things you've done to it. So you've added something, a font to it. So it needs to reload that. And in order to get it to load in there or be reloaded into your software, you have to close the software, then open it up again, and then you'll see butter layer. Okay, now let's go to Silhouette. Okay, here I am in Silhouette Studio. I am in the Business Edition, although I think you can do the same things I'm doing in the free version. But if you're using this for a Cricut machine, of course, you'll need the Business Edition. And I do have links for it down below. I appreciate it a lot when you guys use my links because it helps to keep Patty Ann's Place, Team Patty Ann's Place running. So let's uh, go ahead and go to File and Open. And I'm going to find that one I just downloaded, so it must be this one right here. I'm not sure if I did the two or the four. I've been playing with these. So I'm just going to go ahead and open it. 
And as you'll see, it comes in huge, which I always expected. All you have to do is click on it and then come up here to the top and lock the lock because you want it to change, whoops, uh, proportionately so it doesn't just get real squishy and be really wide. You want the lock lock to proportionately resize it. And I'm gonna change this to about a seven, seven inches, and I'll just hit enter. And now I wonder where in the world did it go? Well, it's easy to find just because it's selected right now still, all you have to do is come up to this little button right here that says center to page and center to page and it's gonna appear just like that. So I'm gonna make a duplicate of this. So I'm gonna hold down my Alt key and make a duplicate. So I have one over there. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take away that too because let's pretend I wanna do a number, what did I do? A number five, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and double click on this. Now you'll notice because of the way this came in, it's already got the nodes showing up. So it's perfect just like this. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here and simplify some of these nodes to get rid of a few of them. And then I'm going to start getting rid of the number two. So I'm gonna scroll way in using this bug tool. And I'm gonna double click again and see this little node right here? I'm gonna click on it to make it active. And once it's active, I can delete it or act on it. Now this one became active, so I'm going to delete it. And I'm going to delete the next active one and the next. Now it's getting a little near to his hat. I could delete that one, let's see what happens. Ah, uh, that's okay, mess up his hat a little bit, but I can fix that. So I'm gonna come up here now and click on this one and start again up here, delete when they're active, I'm gonna come over, this one's active now, I don't wanna delete that one. So I'm gonna click on this node or point. When I click on it, you'll notice it turns into a little white box. And as I said, that means it's the active node. I can act on it, I'm gonna delete it, delete. So this one's active, I don't want that one, I want this one, boom, this one. Just clicking on them and deleting these nodes that I don't want. All right. So that's pretty much what I want to do right there. However, you're thinking, well, what about all that extra junk in there? Well, that's what I'm going to show you how to do. Now, <clears throat> if you've taken a lot of my classes or if you're in my Patreon class, it's just $5 a month and we have an hour-long in-depth class once a month. But anyway, you can find that at patreon.com slash pattyhand. But if you're in my Patreon class, you know that we've messed with nodes before, right? So to mess with these nodes, all you have to do is this. I'm going to click right here. Notice that made another node. And once I've made that node, it's active and I can act on it by dragging it down like this if I want. But you may be thinking to yourself, well, what the heck are you doing to his hat, Patty Ann? Well, I can fix that by doing this. Put a node here and I can stretch that back out like this till it gets to the top of his hat and make it like that. I can come over here and look. Is there anything over here I need to get? That oh, looks, looks pretty good. How about right here? If I click here, I add a node, and I can make that go up like that. All right, let's see what else. Now, another trick that you do, may not be aware of is you can just hold down your space bar. So look at my cursor right now. It's a finger. It's a pointer, right? If I hold down my space bar, watch it change. It, it turns into a little grabby hand, right? Once it's a little grabby hand, I can just use my mouse, hold it down, and shift things over just like that. So I'll say, I'm gonna add another node right here. Remember when it's an arrow, I can't add a node. If it's the pointy thing, I can't. But once I click on, go over this line, notice how it changes into a little arrow and a diagonal line. That's when I can click and add a node and I can drag that node up as far as I'd like to. And I'll just grab it up to there because I'm going to make another one. Uh, I can use this. Now, notice there's these two little pieces, little lines that come out from either side. See how I can change those like that? This is on the smoothing. And what it's doing is when I move one end, it moves the other. What I can do is change that. Click on this. Oops. Double click first and then get that node thing back, node little thing, and come over here to corner instead. When I click on corner, 
rather than let's make this one come out a little further rather than it moving both of these at the same time notice it just changes one of these okay so that might be more helpful for what you're trying to do so you can continue to mess with these nodes I double click to get it first and then I do this and I can move this one down in um, just gonna delete this one I don't need it way out there okay let's see look how this is curling in like this I'm not crazy about that so I'm gonna go ahead and make another node right here and just bring that out a little bit kind of smooth it out and this little node right here, it's kind of making a little point right there. Notice that. Let me see if I scroll in a little better. You can see. See that? What I can do is double click and I can actually just delete this node. Click on it to highlight it and delete it. And that smoothed it right out. Okay. Double click at the nodes. I'm going to pull this guy in just a little bit. And bring this guy in a little bit. So the more you play with nodes, the easier it will become for you. I'm not an expert on nodes by any means, but I do like to play with them. And, uh, you know, even if you're not using this image for this, you might want to just go ahead and grab this free image and just practice doing nodes like this. Okay, I don't like what I'm doing there. So I can change that like that. And then bring this down a little bit more. Whoops, double click bring that out just a hair bit bring this in and this okay like that and again I can add a node here if I want you to make this a little bit more rounded up here like I think it should be and I'm gonna add a node right here and let's see I clicked on make curve, which I shouldn't have done because that made a funny curve right there. Let's go back. Let me show you what I did. Well, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to double click to get a node or a point, whatever you prefer calling it, and just come down here. And again, use these little things like this to push it where I want it to be. So I'm just adding a node and then dragging it down to where basically where I want it to be. So I can double click on this now, add a node here and push this out a little bit if I think I need to. Maybe I'd like this to be a little bit more rounded, but okay. Let's scroll out a little bit, see how we're doing. Okay, I've really messed up his hat and his ear, but that's not going to be a problem because watch, we're just going to continue on with what we're doing, adding a node and bringing this down here. And I just deleted those couple of nodes. So now what I want to do is to fix his ear. So in order to do that, I'm going to come up here and double click on this part, add a node, and then I can easily come out here and fix that part of his ear. And then come up here and add a node and let's see is there more up here i need to get yes but first let's fix that part add a node here and come out around his hat a little bit like that and add a node here let's see go like there like I said, I am not the, you know, like the queen of nodes, as I said. So if you're sitting back there and you are the queen or king of nodes and you're wondering why I'm doing this like this, I'm doing the best that I can right now because the better, the more you do, the better you get. So this is what I can do right now. 
And I'm actually pretty happy with what I can do right now because I'm able to finish the projects and make them look good in my opinion. And I'm pretty happy with what I do. So hopefully you're happy with what you do as well. So I can do that there and then add another node here and bring that down a little bit. Add a node here and bring this in. Maybe bring that back out. Okay, I brought that out too far. So let's scroll in so we can see more easily. So I can bring this in and bring this in and bring this in like that and like that. Okay. I could, if I really want to be picky, add a node here and bring this down like that. All right, so let's scroll back out a little bit and check out what we got going on with this hat here. I'm going to add a node here so I can pull this out and we can see how is this hat coming along. Pretty well. There it is there. Like that. Okay, that looks pretty good. Oh, there's a line over here. If I want to, I could double click on this line and just move it in a little bit. Shouldn't matter. So I think I'm pretty much done. Let's scroll out and look. Okay, notice these crazy little lines in here that I don't want to have in there, although they're probably not going to show up. Let's go see if we said print file and print. Oopsie. See, they don't even show up, right? Let's scroll in and I'll show you. But if they bother you and you want to get rid of them, oh, the way that you could get rid of these easily is using your knife tool. And let me show you that. So I get the knife tool, which is right here. And I'm going to have it on outline and poly. And I'm going to uncheck auto apply. So I'm just going to go through here and click around here so that I can get rid of that and I will apply it now and I'll come get the knife tool again. The same things are checked. Click here and here and apply and then I can simply just delete that thing right out of there. These other lines that you're seeing are the grid that's behind. So let me see. Okay. Let's scroll back out. And as I said, now I'm going to show you how to add a number five to this. So here's the number two, what it looked like. And as I said, I like to use the text butter layer. So I'm going to type in the, come over here to the type tool and click a, type in a five. Click off and then click back on to select it. And then come over here to the layer style panel. And I've already recently used Butter Layer, so it's right here. So I'll click on Butter Layer. Now, since these are about the same size, well, actually, they're exactly the same size, I might as well make my size of my five the same. So I'm going to make it the same size as the inside of the two. So it's about like that, I'd say. So I put it over here, and I guess that would look pretty good. Maybe it's a little too big. There we go. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is the inside of the two, as you'll notice, is a variegated color. So we can do that easily by coming over here to the paint palette on this side and come to the gradient fill, the middle one. And a uh, gradient fill that I kind of liked that I used was this one right here. But I did adjust it a little bit by coming to advanced options. And what I did was I added another thing right there. And this one now I made a little bit darker blue. And I left that one. Let's see that. Not green. I wanted it a bluish color. There we go. And this one I can move over like that. And they do have a little bit of a whiteness in the middle of theirs, but I, I'm happy with the way this looks. If I wanted a white there in the middle, I could click right here and make that one white like that. And then if I wanted it to be just like theirs, 
I could go ahead and move this over like that, move this over like that, and then change the rotation of this because notice it's going this way, it's going horizontally. So I would come down here and change the angle and just click on this and move it like this and it changes that angle if I'd like to do that, like that. I could do it just like that if I'd like. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put the offsets around these. So I'm going to click on the 5, come over here to the offset panel, change it, and I'm going to make my offset a little smaller than that. And I change the distance right here. Just make it maybe a 1.1, maybe a little smaller. Maybe I'll actually go to a 0 0.5. <laughs> 0 0.5, now nah, a little bigger. 0.7. So I'm going to make it the same color that this one is. So I'm going to come up here to this fill. I'm going to get this eyedropper and click on that color right there and it's going to make it the exact same color. Okay, now I need to do yellow. So I'm going to offset that blue one with it still selected and I can make it a little bit smaller too if I want to. And come over here to this paint area get the eyedropper and click on that to make it that color. Perfect, just like that. Now, if I wanted to, what I could do right here, you notice my machine's going to cut this out. I could fix it so it doesn't by playing with the nodes one more time. So let's click on the yellow one. And what I can do is delete that node, delete those nodes so it's no longer going to cut inside of there. It's going to cut like this for the yellow. So I just selected the node and just hit delete on my keyboard till I got rid of all of those. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to group all of this number together. And the other thing I decided to do, which I didn't do on the piece I've already printed to show you, is I did make these little dots because they seem like they put them on there. So in order to do the little dots, I just come over here to the drawing tools and I got the circle and I'm going to hold down my shift key so I have a totally circular circle, maybe about like that. And I'll come over here and place it on, but I'm going to change its color first. I'm going to make it that dark color again. While that's selected, I'm going to hit, or I'm going <clears> to <throat> hold down my alt key and drag another one over here. Hold down my alt again and drag one here. Alt again here and here and just put them willy-nilly wherever you think they belong because I don't know maybe there's a reason for them to be in certain places but I don't know it so I'm just willy-nilly sticking them anywhere I feel like. So, one here. Whoopsie. Gotta hold down the Alt key first. Alt and then this and I'll go Alt and put one directly across on that and you know what maybe I'll Alt and put one up here as well and one here. Now I'm going a little overboard. All right, so there's my little things and maybe you won't want that many, but I'll just hold down my, sh or just grab all this stuff now, make sure they're all grabbed and say group. And now I can put this, right click on this and say send to the back. All right, so I can put this wherever I like it. Now what I might want to do is grab both of these things and come up here to this alignment tool and align it to the center. See that? All right. I actually liked it a little bit better over there, so I'm going to leave it where I had it. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to group all of this together. And one of the things I like to do a lot, a lot of times is put a white offset around everything. So if I wanted to, and this was a cake topper, I could come over here to the offset panel, make an offset, and just leave it like that and change its color to white. And then group it all together. So that would be a nice white offset. And let me show you what that looks like. If I put something dark behind it, I'll change this color to black so you can see. And I'll send this to the back by right clicking. And now you can see I have a beautiful white offset around there. And you may want to do that. And if you go to send it, and it looks like it's going to cut out all these little places, but if you, let's get rid of the black for a minute, 
click or drag a box around all that and just say cut edge, it's just going to cut that out like that around the edge perfectly. But on the one that I did, let's uh, group this one if, it, if I didn't yet. I guess I did. And let's um, make a duplicate of it by hitting Control or the Alt and drag one over. Uh, for this one, I'm going to ungroup it and I'm going to get rid of this offset because I don't really want this one. Okay. So what I can do now is I can change the line color of this if that's what I want. I want a black line around it, not an offset. Or I could put a black offset. That would probably be even just as easy, y'all. I'm just going to go to offset and I'm just going to make a tiny little offset because I don't want a big one. Okay, maybe about like that. So I can change that offset's color to black. And it would look like that. Okay. So I can do it just like that. And now what I'm going to also do is click on that offset, hold down my Alt key and drag it off. Drag one off. Because I'm going to use this as my backing piece now, but I'm not going to make it black. So what I'm going to do now is click on this to select it. Say Object, Release the Compound Path. That put little boxes around all of that, which you really can't see, but they're there. And I'm going to right click and say weld. So now this is just one piece. And as I said, I don't want it to be black. I'm going to change its color to white because there's no reason to use all of my black ink to make a black thing like that. If I wanted it to be black, I could cut it out of black cardstock. Okay, so now I'm going to scroll out and let's get rid of this. And I might as well get rid of my duplicate and this. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to center these back together. Make sure I didn't move them. Okay. Okay, you'll notice that's going up a little bit like that. And I don't want that to happen. So I'm going to take this guy and this guy. Okay, so what I'm going to do with this guy right here is notice the bounding box. That's what I'll call it. When I click on it, it's out further than it is on this one. And that's what's messing this up. So what I'm going to do with this one is just come up here, go to Object, Convert to Path, and notice that put the box right around the top of the five, just like it is with this one. Then I can take these two back together and simply center them like that. And then I'm going to group them. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to put on my registration marks because this is going to be a print then cut. So to put on the registration marks, I come up here to the page setup panel. The third button over is for the registration marks. Right now they're off. I'll make them on. Okay, now what I'm going to do is take both of these things, grab them both, and twirl them. So I'm going to hold down my shift key and turn them to the side like this. Um, what what I'm wanting to do is to know is this going to are they both going to fit on there because I want to do them both at the same time. So in order to know exactly where my lines are here, I can come to the first icon in the page setup and turn on my cut border and make sure that nothing is going outside of the cut border. So this is really close. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab both of these because I want them both the same exactly. I'm going to resize them down just a hair. Okay. So now this one's going to fit perfectly and this one's going to fit perfectly. Now it looks like they're overlapping a little bit here. So what I could do if I want to is go ahead and flip this one this way. See if that makes a difference. Because I can twirl this one around a little bit to make it fit within those cut borders. Okay, so it looks like that all fits within the cut border. It doesn't go outside of these little um, hash marks or these little marks here so that my machine can read it easily. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go print this. So I'll go File, Print. Notice that this isn't printing because I didn't make my lines have any weight to it. It's still at zero. But my machine will see that when it's time to cut it. So I'll say print and I'll change this preferences. I'm using an Epson Workforce 7720. I used to use the HP that worked beautifully also, but that's upstairs now. Uh, I'm going to change this to 
high settings or even higher yet. Best quality I can get. Say OK, OK, and print. And I'm going to go ahead and print this, and I'll be right back. OK, here's the one I just printed. And I tested it, of course, before I took it off my mat to make sure it printed well, or cut well, I'm sorry. But I printed it and I cut it. OK, so. And remember I said I was going to show you the difference between this one and the other one that I had done earlier. So this one, as you can maybe see, let's see, put a color behind here, white. Maybe you can see that the, this cut through here. Let me get a tool to show you. This cut right through here, right? All these little spots that were open, okay? This one also cut through there all the little spots that were open. The difference is, on the one I just showed you, I had you use the, um, when we went to Object, Release Compound Path, which put boxes around everything. And then we right clicked and said Weld, which made it all into one piece, so there's no longer these little holes. So these are just two different optional ways that you can do this. So this way, of course, when I glue this together, hopefully you can see that there's some little white that's going to show through these holes that were cut. Whereas on this one, it's actually still little holes. So it just depends on the way you like it, whether you do the object release compound path and object, um, I mean, right click and weld. So the only thing left to tell you about this is all you do is glue these two pieces together. Notice I put my popsicle stick on the outside. If I had been thinking more clearly, I would have put my popsicle stick, pretend this is one on the inside like that, and glued it together like that. And been done just like that. The other thing I did to this one, and you probably can't tell, but in real person you can tell easily and they're beautiful, is I used some of this glossy accents on their eyes, which makes them kind of glow and really come alive and look lively. So that's it for the cake topper. Let's move on quickly to the other two things. Okay, for this French fry shaped uh, little box and the one that's pink as well, uh, I just re opened it up after I found it on that same website, downloaded it and opened it up into my uh, Silhouette Studio. And I resized it down so it was going to fit as a print then cut on <clears throat> my portrait. So that's all I did for this one. Now, of course, what I could have done as well is go ahead and rotate this back first and maybe even put a name in here or a birthday number. Maybe this is, again, the fifth birthday or maybe it's the 40th birthday, right? Maybe this person really liked these guys. We could change it to 40th. I could change its color to white if I'd like. And just have that as the part of the print and cut. And maybe the little girl's name or the woman's name is uh, Jean. And it would probably be best if you do it all in caps so it will fit on there nicely. Okay. So then all I would do is resize this down. And I could put it on here. And of course, I could make a bunch of these and uh, label them with the people that are coming to the party's name, which would be a fun thing to do. And I could change this color to black, or I could choose one of these colors that's in here. Uh, I think I'll choose the red of, whoops, come up here, get the eyedropper, and do the reddish color, so like that. And then I would just group all this together. And again, I would twirl it around so it's going to fit within the boundaries of this mat and I would just go to file and print and print uh, the other there's only one other thing now there's no score lines on this and I just figured out where to bend it when I had it done if you'd like to what you could have done was to go ahead and you know put some score lines on so if I made this like I can kind of see where they go from here to here, here, to here. So I could do that if I wanted to. Let's see how well I can do. If I go from here <clears throat> to here, and now that's not very good because you'll notice it's a little bit off. So I'd mess with this to get it right on track. So I want it to be here and, okay. 
Anyway, I'd mess with, oh, I hold my shift key. That's the problem. I'd mess with this a little bit to try to get it. There, that's pretty good right there. And I would change that to the color that I always use for my score lines, uh, the green. Make it that crazy green if I want to. And then I would change it, not green. And I would change it to a dotted line so that I would know <clears throat> when I go to make this that that's going to be the score line. And of course, once it's printed, we can go over here and I would go by line color because that's going to allow me to either choose do I want it to cut the outside of this or do I want it to just do the score line and I would change this to score right there. So it would make a different kind of line. But I did mine without doing the score. I just, you know, folded it where I knew it needed to be. <clears throat> so that's that one. Let's see what else do we have. This one was really easy. Uh, again, I just resized it down so it would fit. This one I did not put the registration marks on because I wanted to make it a little bit bigger yet. So I just cut this one with my scissors. I just said file and print. After it was printed, I just cut it with my scissors and glued it together. And I could have done the same with this one easily. <clears throat> this one was the one I used for sublimation and you can tell that because I've mirrored it. It could also be for a, um, a print you know, uh, um, heat transfer vinyl. And basically that would be the same as what I had done on the little bag that I did uh, that was sublimation. You could do it again on the heat transfer. I call it vinyl because it's not really paper, but it's not really vinyl, I guess. But anyway, that heat transfer jazz. And I've done many videos on that. So maybe you can look that up. <clears throat> Let's see what else we have here. We showed that one. Oh, there were little cute little stickers too okay that they had on that same website and this is the way it came in with a happy fifth birthday harley so and they had a blank one that they gave you as well okay when you download and then open the stickers they come in like this all you have to do is right click on it and say release compound path or come up to object release compound path so you can move these off and then these are separate as well so then you can just take this one that's blank and and I wanted to put in happy fifth birthday, let's say. Once again, I would do all capital letters because they work better on a uh, curve like that. Okay, happy fifth birthday. Okay, I'm gonna have to move it over because I want it all on one line, right? So I'm gonna have to stretch this out. There we go. And I'm gonna make this font smaller. Okay, and if I want to, I could change the font as well to something else. What was it that I was using before? Butter layer. I don't think butter layer will work very well for this, but let's look. Eh, it's okay. Might be a little heavy. I can change this color to black. And then all you do to get it to go around here, double click on it with it still being the editable text. Get this little four headed arrow here and drag it down. Okay, notice it's on the outside. I don't really want it on the outside, but I don't want it on the inside like upside down either, like that. So here's what I can do. I can bring it back to what's at the upside or on top, right? Then there's this little thing that looks like a zipper to me. Just move that in and it allows you to move it where you'd want it to be. So basically then what I would do is I would right click on that and say convert to path because that allows you to move it even more like that. So that's how I would do it. Uh, if we want to say, let's say we want to write Harley over here. Again, the tool, the text tool, H-A-R-L-E-Y. Double click or click on that to make it smaller. And let's see, is that going to fit? Yeah, that looks pretty good. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it, whoopsie daisy. I'm going to get Harley, bring Harley out here, double click, and then bring it up here with that four headed arrow. I'm going to push it in so it goes to the inside. See that? First it goes to the outside and it's upside down. If I have my mouse key uh, down and I just keep pushing in, it's going to pop to the inside 
and I kind of like it like that but I don't want it totally on the edge so again we would just use this little zipper thing and move it in like that and I could still move it around like this if I want to so I could change that color to black and honestly I don't like this so I'm going to delete it and try that again so once again for you to see one more time over here get the A type in happy fifth birthday and again I need to move this over whoopsie look at that wowzers I want this to all be on one line so I'm going to do that till it's all on one line then what I can do is click off and click back on and make it smaller so it's going to fit nicely and that will fit well so now what I'm going to do is double click on it again and bring it down here till it hits the outside and then I can just use this to make it go in further and then I can object oh yeah, I want to click on this object and okay go up here object and convert it to a path oopsie not all of it just this thing object so all I want is this one thing and I want to convert it to a path so object convert it to a path and now that's going to let me move it a little bit like I like to and then I can change its color and again if these are stickers I might I'll group all this together and whoops I must not have had everything selected very well object convert to a path and then group all this together okay must not have converted that to a path so now I need to make this smaller like this maybe I'll make them two inch stickers so about like that okay get rid of this one and then all I can if I want to what I can do here is put on the registration marks and with this guy here selected I can come over here to the replicate panel and say fill page now usually I don't like to do this too much because you're going to see it's going to leave a lot of empty space but if you want to do something quickly this will work fill the page there you go see what I mean about leaving a lot of empty space so what I would probably do is just move these over don't think I can fit another one there but I can certainly fit another one down the center aisle here <laughs> And then you would just go and print them. So you'd go print them and then you go to send them. You don't want all of that to cut. So you'd grab all this and just say cut edge. And then what you would do is rather than cardstock, you would look to see if there was one for stickers. Sticker paper glow in the dark. Sticker paper glitter. Sticker paper clear. Sticker paper white. <laughs> so you have all those options. Okay, that's the stickers. And I think that might be it. Okay, I think I've shown you everything I said I was going to show you when I set out. I hope that you like this video. Remember now, if you're doing the sublimation and you want more information about that, let me know in the comments down below. Um, what I did was I just followed the directions from Cricut. I went onto their uh, website and they talk about the specific bags that I used here. And they told you exactly the cosmetic bags how long and at what temperature to uh, press it. So I guess that's it. If you enjoyed my videos, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe and share this. I really appreciate it when you share it. And if you give me thumbs up, that, that helps more people be able to see this on YouTube. So again, thanks so much for joining me and I'll see you guys again soon. Bye. Oh, the winner. I almost forgot to tell you the winner of our contest. Hang on a second.